Hello everyone, welcome to my sewing channel. I've been wanting to do this for quite a long time, but it's finally happening. So my name is Katrina. I love to sew and knit. I've been doing it since I was a little girl, so quite a few years now. And I decided I'd start out with the first video, just showing some fall creations. So these are just things I've sewn. I'm going to save knitting for a separate video because I think that would be fun. Um, and they're not all things I sewed this fall by any means. Some of them are from past years. That would be a lot. But I thought it'd be fun to show you some of the things I like to make. There's some different styles here, different textures, um, all kinds of fun stuff. So before we start, if you like this topic, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos, um, comment, especially if you want to see another type of video. I'd love to take video suggestions on maybe how to make a certain um, piece of clothing or a simple like sewing project for beginners kind of thing, knitting tips, anything like that. So let me know what you'd like to see. And without further ado, let's get started. So this first piece, is this beautiful flannel plaid skirt. Um, I'm hoping to insert pictures of me wearing most of these pieces. So hopefully I will be able to do that. But this skirt, I made this fall. Um, my own design. The fabric was from Joann's. I just saw it on the shelves and thought it was so pretty. The colors in here go with a lot um, of pieces that I already have in my closet. And then fabric covered buttons. I don't know if you can see those. So, so pretty. That was one of, um, one of my first times doing fabric covered buttons. I just learned how to do them recently. And my thumbs got pretty bruised doing this because the flannel was pretty thick. But a lot of fun. I've already gotten a lot of wear out of this piece and I know I'll get a lot more. So that's the first piece. Okay. Next, we have a skirt I made last fall. This fabric was from my grandma's stash, so totally free. Who knows how old it is, but I just thought it was so beautiful. So it's a midi skirt. I'm trying to make sure you can see it all. It's got pockets, and it's this beautiful suede kind of leathery material in really this beautiful color. It's not really a brown, it's not really a red. I don't know what you'd call this terracotta? Cinnamon? <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think this color should be called? But I love this skirt so much. It's so, so pretty. Such a good fall piece. Okay, moving on to more skirts. This one's got a little lint on the front. Sorry about that. But this is a corduroy skirt. I love corduroy so much. And the best thing about this is I found the fabric in the clearance section at Walmart. And I think it was about maybe $4 for the fabric for this skirt. Super, super inexpensive. Beautiful navy color. Again, pockets, buttons. Again, my own design. Um, a very, it's a very small corduroy. I don't know if it'll go into focus there, but this beautiful micro corduroy. And such a good skirt to wear with leggings, sweaters, blouses, all kinds of stuff. All right, moving right along with skirts. <laughs> um, this I made kind of the end of the summer this year. Oh, and the blue corduroy skirt I made last year. I don't know if I mentioned that. But this skirt I made in the end of the summer, it's maybe not so much a fall piece, maybe it's more of a spring summer piece, but I thought I'd include it since that's when I made it. Um, and this was a Walmart, like a home decor kind of fabric that they had for sale um, you know, like rolled up a couple yards of it for like $10 or something. And I thought, why not make a skirt out of it? It's such a beautiful fabric. So it's got a slit here in the back. It's a little slit, so you can walk in it. And then it has this beautiful detail, which was so hard to do, honestly. Um, if you can see there, all of these little buttons, gathers, um, it wasn't hard, but figuring out how to do it was hard. I almost ruined the skirt before I figured out how to make it work, but a really fun piece, really pretty skirt. Okay, this one I love, particularly because I almost got rid of the fabric. 
so this fabric was also from my grandma, my dad's mom, who was Austrian. Um, I don't know where it came from, but it's this beautiful tiny little gray and black plaid, almost like a houndstooth fabric, if you can see there. And I had it like uh, ready to get rid of it. And I thought, why don't I try and make something first? And if it's a fail, the fabric was free, you know, so don't have to worry about it. But I'm so happy with how it turned out. So it has these very puffy sleeves, super, super puffy, um, with cuffs here. So these are kind of like a, not quite to the elbow, puff sleeve, little tie in the back, and just a scoop neck. And then the skirt is just a little mini skirt with again, fabric covered buttons just down the side here. Um, and the reason I decided to make it a two piece, originally I thought about making a dress, but um, I'm so glad I didn't because the beauty and the joy of a two piece is you can switch it out with other pieces, which I have already done several times. Um, and I'm so happy about that. So I had a white kind of I don't even know what you'd call the fabric. It feels like a potato sack. <laughs> um, it's actually like a cream color set that I'd bought online um, earlier this year. It's a shirt and shorts. I'll try to insert some pictures. But I switched that up with these two pieces. And instead of two outfits, I could make four just out of those two outfits. So I love two piece sets. Love, love, love them. Okay, moving on to pants. I have two pairs of pants here. Just a second. So these are a pair of wool black pants that I made last winter. So just a kind of straight leg. Um, you can see that very high waist and just a zipper in the back and some pockets on the sides. I made these using a jumpsuit pattern. So there was a lot of uh, alterations to make it fit right. It was quite the journey, but really happy with how they finished looking. They look like maybe 1940s era pants, although not as baggy in the legs. The 1940s had some baggy legged pants, but the, the way the waist fits is just so pretty, so vintage. I love it so much. All right, so the next pair of pants I have, I made this fall, and they are a cream denim fabric in a very similar style to those, but I actually used a real pattern for these. So they've got pockets, they've got a side zipper here, a back pocket as well. Um, again, just the high waist with the waistband, straight legs, and I've worn these several times too already, and I love these so much. So pretty for winter. I know a lot of people say not to wear white in the winter, but I like to break that rule. So fun. Okay, moving on to some blouses and shirts. So this blouse I love so much. I know that I say that about every piece, but this one really is special. I'll see if I can get a close-up of the fabric here. It is this beautiful mini floral print, and it has Almost like, um, well, originally when I saw the fabric, I thought for 4th of July because it's red and blue and white. But now that I've made the blouse, I don't really think that when I look at it anymore. So I don't know what I was thinking, <laughs> but it's so pretty for fall, for summer. This fabric is incredible. It's so lightweight. It's totally cotton. Um, it's almost like see-through, but it's not. So it's very cool. Um, breezy, like for a hot day. Little kind of Peter Pan collar with a ruffle, fabric covered buttons again, puff sleeves, very Little House on the Prairie vibes, which I love Little House on the Prairie, so very happy about that. And this fabric was from fabric.com, which is one of my absolute places to find fabric. They're amazing. Okay, next blouse is a very special one. This was made out of pillowcases that my dear auntie friend in Hawaii gave me. Literally just pillowcases. Um, they already had the ruffles on them, so I just reused the ruffles, the eyelet. I did all the pin tucks by, um, 
by myself. Those were not in the original pillowcases. And then buttons, I use the eyelet again. Um, and then little ruffles on the cuffs, so pretty. Button cuffs, the ruffle and the pin tux goes around the back as well. That took a while, but it was worth it. It kind of looks like a cowgirl uh, blouse, honestly. That wasn't what I was going for, but that's how it turned out, so pretty fun. Okay, and I made that during the summer, but it's a good piece for fall and winter too. This blouse, I probably wear this blouse more, more than anything else here. It gets so much wear. And this piece I made last fall. It, again, it was Walmart fabric, $4 for this whole piece of fabric um, in the clearance section. And it, I think it's polyester, I'm sure it's polyester, but it looks like silk and it feels like silk. And it has this beautiful like brushed, almost like a paintbrush strokes texture. Here, I'll see if it'll go into focus. And then the sleeves. So these sleeves are famous. I'll show them off. Ruffles that twist around. So the reason they're kind of famous in my household is my mom, years ago, maybe three or four years ago, found a blouse at Goodwill for $2, brand new with the tags still on it. Very similar to this. Um, a more of a white or a cream color, not so beige, but it had these sleeves on it. And I looked at them and I said, I have to figure out how to recreate those sleeves. So I used them to create my own pattern. Um, and now I've put these on a number of dresses, blouses. They're just so beautiful. They're so unique. I am obsessed with sleeves, especially unique, big, beautiful sleeves. So. I did that with this top. This top goes with everything. It's kind of a vintagey vibe again. And then it's got two little pearl buttons in the back. So, so pretty. One of my absolute favorites. So that's that blouse. Okay, we're throwing it back a ways here with this shirt. I think I made this shirt maybe four years ago. And this again was fabric from my grandma, my dad's mom, my Austrian grandma. Um, that I again thought about getting rid of and I'm so glad I didn't. It's wool. It's probably a hundred percent wool. There was no you know label on it. Um, but back in those days most fabric was was more pure so it probably isn't mixed with anything. Um, it's very itchy. That's the only bad thing about this shirt. So I usually wear a shirt under it. But I made my one of my brothers um, a men's shirt out of the same fabric so we match whenever we wear them which is super fun but I also used a vintage pattern for my grandma for this style so the pattern itself is actually I think from the 1940s or 50s um, so not only is the fabric vintage the pattern is vintage which I absolutely love I love this shirt so much it's so warm and just kind of fun Christmassy fall colors so good okay another plaid and this one I made before that one, I believe. So I think I made this like five years ago and it was the first button down shirt I ever made um, from what I can remember. It's hard to remember when it goes that far back, but it still is one of my favorite shirts. So it's a turquoise kind of teal plaid and then the light blue lace, which goes around to the back as well. And the cuffs are the light blue lace, the pockets. Um, this was Joanne's fabric that I saw and snatched up. I think it's just such a unique, beautiful plaid shirt. Um, it's not quite your normal run of the mill plaid shirt. So that's what I love about it. I still wear it so much. Love that one. <clears throat> okay, last um, kind of shirt. Well, it's actually a jacket. So last piece like that before we get on to the dresses. This is a linen jacket. And let me tell you, I love this piece so much and I get so many comments on it. It's very unique. Um, so it's a linen cotton blend that I found at Joann's. I saw the color and I thought I have to get that. 
it's so just comfortable. It's not very warm, so um, it's not really like a November kind of jacket, maybe like September on a sunny day. It doesn't keep you very warm. Um, but the pattern I used, I'll try and I'll link it in the description box. I don't remember which number pattern it was. Um, I'll try and link all the patterns. I didn't use very many patterns actually, but any of the ones I used, I will link down below. So the pattern was for a workout kind of stretchy um, zip up jacket, like for going to the gym or running or something. And I thought, why not make it in linen? I totally can, right? <laughs> so it turned out it worked, which made me very happy. It's fully lined. Um, so it's got this pretty beige lining on the inside. And I actually made a couple of these. So there's one in this color in my Etsy shop and one in like a teal turquoise color. So if this looks like a style you would wear, you can head over to my Etsy shop to check that out. The link to my Etsy shop will be um, in the description as well. Okay, dresses. So going back to that navy corduroy fabric from Walmart, this is what I made with the rest of the fabric. So again, I can't remember if the whole piece was $8 or the whole piece was $4. It might've been eight, maybe not. Well, regardless, this piece was probably $4 or less for this fabric. So I made a little corduroy mini dress. Um, overalls, the buckles, again, were from my grandma. <laughs> so there's a little piece of her in that, zipper in the back. Just so pretty in winter, goes with so many different blouses underneath and ankle boots. So, so cute. So I've gotten a lot of wear out of this piece as well. And again, I made this last fall. Oh, this dress. This dress I made this uh, end of this summer, this fall. And oh my goodness, so beautiful. So many pretty details. So I did use a pattern for this, um, a McCall's pattern. I don't remember the number, but I'll link it below. And I've been on the lookout for a pattern like this for a long time. Um, this kind of, I think it's a 1940s style, somewhere in that time period, with the buttons down the front and then this, you know, smooth, um, waist part but then the gathers over the top part of the bodice so when i found this pattern i was so happy i've been looking for like over a year for a pattern like this and this is one of the first patterns i've used in a long time that i didn't have to alter it at all um, to fit me or to a style i preferred more i loved it so much the way it was the only thing is the sleeves turned out shorter than i thought so they're not quite to the wrist or a little above the wrist, but it's still beautiful. I love it so much. And my little sister made a dress in the same fabric, different style. This was a fabric we found at Joann's as well. So, so pretty, such a beautiful dress. It's kind of a crepe. So it's thin, but it's very heavy, which makes it fun for twirling in. I love a good twirly dress. So super fun make, something I'll be wearing so much for all seasons. Okay, this dress, this black dress, maybe the most simple, boring you could get, but I intentionally made it that way. So I wanted a black turtleneck dress that I could just wear with anything. I don't wear a lot of black. I think the only black pieces here are actually today are this and the wool pants. Um, but in winter, it's hard to wear a lot of colors sometimes. I grew up in Hawaii, so I'm used to wearing all kinds of colors all year round. And I just, I needed some darker color pieces for the winter. But the beauty about this dress is it's so simple. The sleeves aren't, you know, not much going on. They're just straight and fitted. The skirt is a little twirly, but not too much. So you can wear vests over it, sweaters, cardigans, jackets. Um, I've worn this with that mustard colored jacket. So it's the perfect base to just add things to a scarf, maybe beanie, whatever you want. So, and it's classic. It'll never go out of style, this style of dress. So I made this two years ago and I have worn it a lot, a lot since then. Okay, this dress is 
is so special. So I made this three years ago, I want to say. I think that's right. And this is made out of a tablecloth from my grandma, my mom's mom, who that's where the the lineage of sewing comes from. Well, my, my dad's grandma sewed as well. <clears throat> but my mom taught me to sew. Her mom taught her to sew and her mom taught her to sew. So the lineage of seamstresses goes way back on my mom's side. And my grandma had given us this tablecloth and I saw it and I said, mom, can I please use that for a dress? And she said, absolutely. It's still got some tea stains on it. Um, in some places they wouldn't come out. This might have actually been my great grandma's. I'm not sure about that. But again, a very simple classic style, very twirly full circle skirt, princess seam, scoop neck, just some straight sleeves. Such a pretty piece. Um, and it's like wearing a piece of my grandma with me. It's just something from her. So it's so special. I actually showed her the dress after I made it. And I said, where do you think I got this? And she could not guess. And I said, it's a tablecloth, you gave us. And she just laughed. She couldn't believe it. So very, very special dress. Something I'll never get rid of. Okay, you guys, this beautiful dress. Oh my word. This dress I made three years ago, um, the same time as I made that white one. This was fabric from Joann's. Um, they still sell this fabric, actually. I've seen it in the store. But it is a plum colored crepe bag satin. You can see there. And then a purple chiffon as well. So I kind of drafted this myself. I have a book. It's called So Many Dresses. I'll link it below. If you want to sew, you want to learn how to make endless kinds of dresses or design, start designing your own dresses, this book is a lifesaver. It has all the different bodice pieces, all the different sleeve pieces, all the different skirt pieces, um, and then it teaches you how to hack them all if you want to change them up. So I've used those pieces for a lot of my dresses. Um, and this one was no exception, same thing. So it's got a twirly circle skirt. I think this is a full circle skirt. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And then we've got a um, princess seamed and then a sweetheart neckline. It's hard to see when it's not on someone, but it is a little dip right there. And then this yoke gathers into the collar, which was very tricky to figure out how to make that work, but it's such a beautiful effect when it's done. And then it's got um, more satin at the neck and the back is the sheer chiffon as well. And so are the sleeves and then they've got a little bell ruffle sleeve at the bottom. So absolutely love this dress. I've gotten a lot of comments on this one too when I wear it. And I have a couple up for sale in my Etsy shop. So I think I have two in this color and then I also have like an emerald green, the same style. So beautiful, even prettier than this. Um, those jewel tones in satin are just unreal. So pretty. Okay, next dress. And we're almost done. I saved the best for last. So hang around to see it. It's pretty amazing. This dress I made last fall. Again, this was a Walmart clearance fabric sale piece. Um, black zipper, but that doesn't show on the outside. <laughs> uh, I think this piece was $4. So another, it's a kind of a thick knit fabric, um, half circle skirt, princess seams, a little collar here, mandarin collar. And then the sleeves, it's hard to tell, but when they're on, they've got all these like peekaboo openings all the way down. So it looks so pretty when you're wearing it. Um, it's just something very different and unique. And there's a little zipper in the back. Just a beautiful color for fall. And again, for that price for the fabric, how could you not? So, so pretty. Okay, this piece is so special. So special. So we start with the blouse. Um, beautiful. This fabric is unreal. And then there's a skirt as well. Wait, it won't fall off the hanger. So the skirt, very long, very full skirt. Um, so this fabric, 
was made possible, a very dear friend gave me a gift card for my birthday to Hobby Lobby, where I had never gone shopping. She was trying to convince me to go look at the fabric. And I never would have been shopping in the fabric section there if it hadn't been for her. So thank you. This fabric, I think, is more of like a home decor, curtains, maybe even upholstery type fabric. Um, here, I'll do a close up of it. So beautiful. It looks like an impressionist painting was my thought when I saw it and I grabbed it off the rack, ran to get it cut out. So, so beautiful. So the top has little pearl buttons all down the back and then we've also got the buttons on the cuffs. So just pretty little details. And then the skirt, um, very fancy, very formal pleats. This is a very wide waistband very full twirly skirt, zipper in the back. And the reason I did this as a two piece instead of a dress um, is because again, I wanted to be able to mix and match it. And I did, I put it, the skirt with several blouses for some pictures. Hopefully I'll be able to um, add those pictures to the video. But I haven't actually put the top with any pants or other skirts yet, but I'm excited to try that. It looks, almost like something someone would wear on the red carpet. Um, tell me if you, if you disagree, you're welcome to disagree, but that's kind of what I was thinking when I, when I saw the fabric and when I made the design, I thought, this is so fancy, this is so pretty, so, so special. So that is the last piece for today. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, a little roundup of, well, kind of a long roundup of some fall pieces from this fall, last fall, years ago. Um, if you liked the video, give it a like. I'd love it if you'd subscribe. Comment if you want to see any other videos. I'm hoping to do a roundup of Christmas makes coming up soon. I have some really beautiful ones to show you guys. And then I also am planning a sweater collection video. So I have a lot of hand knit sweaters. I would love to share them. So those are two that I have planned coming up, but if you wanna see anything else, let me know down below. And also you can check out my Etsy shop to see all kinds of handmade stuff. I love to make clothing. I've made costumes, hair bows, scrunchies, all kinds of fun um, things that I have sewn. So you can also check out my Instagram at Katrina Cheshire, that will be down below. I post a lot of my sewing and knitting there as well. So if you wanna see pictures or follow me on there, you can check that out. But I hope you all have a wonderful, beautiful day. Happy Thanksgiving, and thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye.